The River Benue, one of the two major rivers in Africa's most populous nation. Nigeria stretches 1,400 kilometers. From its source in the Adamawa Highlands to its confluence with River Niger in Lokoja. As expected, the river is responsible for the economic well being of millions of people living off its resources like John. The lone fisherman who has lived in this shack on the banks of the Great River for over 50 years. <laughs> This lonely shack here on the banks of River Benue in Yula, Northeast Nigeria, is home to John, a fisherman. John has lived here all his life for more than 50 years, and the river has been the source of his sustenance for his family of eight children. But all this might change if a dangerous practice is not curbed. The the fishermen are fearless and very comfortable and the waters as much as they are on dry land. John's little house sees it all. He nurses no fear of hip hops, crocodiles or snakes despite the frailty of the contraption he calls a home. He alludes his safety to cultural and supernatural forces. <laughs> At dusk, just before the fishermen appear on the horizon on their homeward journey, the women take their place armed with bowls and baskets to collect the fish from the boats. It seems an unwritten rule that women are the only middlemen, or perhaps middlewomen, allowed in this business. But the bargaining process is as unique as the skills required to catch the fish. <laughs> When using hooks, the baits are either fingerlings or tadpoles. To get these in abundance sometimes requires a fisherman to travel miles to the north, as far as Konduga and Bruno State, a boiling pot of insurgent activities in the last decade. The women separate the fish in their different types and sell them off for some profit. Rejoice and Naomi have been doing this business since they were young girls and it has been their main source of livelihood. Natasha, 
a call you come one at them come and keep him. In that damn business, the man even commander and chair to the bar, Saba, you so Saba, the Muna Dawana, Jimmy Ayola, Nazo and a cousin Chewa in a zoo by Junko Gina. To a hack and dimmer in a zoo, 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 in a in a zoo, in a zoo, in a zoo, in what rules this business is absolute trust. The women do not need to pay for the fish before they sell them off. It's business that requires no capital on the woman's part. <laughs> I want a local chin, call the local chin, keeping the local chin, sir. It down, call local chin, Papa Samashima. To call on the local chin, the local chin keeping, sir, they keep it. Eto, there's a one local chin, one number orange. One and local chin, Ryan Azua. Keeping by a salmon to so say, same as so raga raga. In Roya Zuya part of Kumawa, a coroner of Muna Ike, a kid and a koji. To a wooden key come so gumry, the sewer in some one in Kivai. What are no combe, Yuba, in Kivia reggae, in be bacheba, Zam Jemu Nada Musa Abanda. With the day's business over, John returns to his hut and prepares his dinner. His meal is simple, but the main component is the fish. Inka <laughs> This peaceful life of living in harmony with nature despite the low level of income of these people is being threatened by population explosion and the use of chemicals to fish by some fishermen. So, I want to get a quick keep your masala. They make a make you feel good. I can check a good currency room when so I'm planning the IKE. Not keep you and look when so sunk says okay. When I come in and so come a little bit of water, so just okay. Do the way when so come on so sat in the hand of the Kamata Saba. They are just a deep way and keep them. As the rainy season draws near and the water begins to recede, the fishermen are hopeful for bigger catch and the women brace up for more business. But behind their hopes lies the fear that could threaten their collective livelihood and possibly cut short the odds of the existence of the lone fisherman on the banks of the Bainway.